we are asked to determine which consecutive whole numbers each square root is between. Looking at the given square roots, notice how the radicands, or the numbers under these square roots, are not perfect squares, and therefore these square roots will not simplify perfectly to whole numbers. Looking at the notes on the right, we have a list of perfect squares in red, and then below, here are several examples showing these square roots of perfect squares simplify perfectly to whole numbers. And then finally, here we have a list of consecutive whole numbers. Looking at the first example, we have the square root of seven. If we focus on the radicand of seven, notice how seven is between the perfect squares of four and nine, which means the square root of seven must be greater than the square root of four and less than the square root of nine. And now we simplify the square root of four and the square root of nine. If it's helpful, we can write four as two squared and nine as three squared. We have the square root of two squared is less than the square root of seven, which is less than the square root of three squared. And now simplifying the square roots, the square root of two squared is equal to one factor of two. We have two is less than the square root of seven, which is less than the square root of three squared is equal to one factor of three. And now we've shown the square root of seven is between the consecutive whole numbers of two and three. Next we have the square root of 32. Notice how the radicand of 32 is between the perfect squares of 25 and 36, which means the square root of 32 must be greater than the square root of 25 and less than the square root of 36. To show work, let's write 25 as five squared and 36 as six squared. We have the square root of five squared is less than the square root of 32, which is less than the square root of six squared. The square root of five squared is equal to one factor of five. We have five is less than the square root of 32, which is less than the square root of six squared is equal to one factor of six. And now we know the square root of 32 is between the consecutive whole numbers of five and six. Next we have the square root of 75. The radicand of 75 is between the perfect squares of 64 and 81. And therefore, the square root of 75 must be greater than the square root of 64 and less than the square root of 81. Let's write 64 as 8 squared and 81 as 9 squared. We have the square root of 8 squared is less than the square root of 75, which is less than the square root of 9 squared. The square root of eight squared simplifies to one factor of eight. The square root of nine squared simplifies to one factor of nine. The square root of 75 is between the consecutive whole numbers of eight and nine. And now for the last example, we have the square root of 112. The radicand of 112 is between the perfect squares of 100 and 121 which means the square root of 121 must be greater than the square root of 100 and less than the square root of 121. Let's write 100 as 10 squared and 121 as 11 squared. We have the square root of 10 squared is less than the square root of 112, which is less than the square root of 11 squared. The square root of 10 squared is equal to one factor of 10. The square root of 11 squared is equal to one factor of 11. The square root of 112 is between 10 and 11. I hope you found this helpful.